science guy here to tell you everything you need to know about boiling points and the periodic table. In case you don't know, the periodic table is an organization of the elements according to their atomic number. The modern periodic law states that when the elements are arranged in this way, they will exhibit a periodic recurrence of chemical and physical properties. This can also be called periodicity. And using this idea, one is able to notice patterns in the properties of the elements. In this case, I was able to find patterns for the physical properties of boiling points. The boiling point of an element is the temperature at which it can change its state from a liquid to a gas. Some characteristics of the element can help determine the boiling point. One characteristic is the size of the atom and the number of electrons that each atom has. This affects boiling point because an atom with many electrons, as well as space for them to move, will have greater dispersion forces acting on the atom. The greater the forces that hold the atoms together, the more energy is needed to break them apart, and so a higher temperature is needed to reach boiling point. One of the most obvious patterns on the periodic table is the difference in boiling points of metals and nonmetals. Metals generally have boiling points much higher than nonmetals. This difference occurs because the metals are held together by metallic bonds. The valence electrons of metals don't belong to one individual atom, but instead float freely, creating a sea of electrons. Metals become positive ions in a sea of electrons, and the attractive force creates a very strong metallic bond that needs a lot of energy to be broken. On the other hand, nonmetals don't have the same characteristics as metals, and so they form bonds that are weak, and they have a lower boiling point. Another way to find trends in the periodic table is by looking at changes as you go through the periods. A period is a horizontal row on the periodic table, the first of which contains only hydrogen and helium. These are the two elements with lowest boiling points because their atomic mass is very small, which results in a weak bond being formed between the molecules. The second period consists of lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. In this period, the boiling points move in an upward slope until it peaks at carbon, after which it plummets to negative temperatures with nitrogen, then levels off until it drops very low at neon. For period three elements, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, the boiling points increase from sodium to aluminum with a small decrease to silicon and a big drop down to phosphorus, and a downward slope from there. The increase in boiling points from sodium to aluminum can be explained by the increase in the charge of the ion, which increases the sea of electrons, which will make the metallic bond stronger. Although silicon is not a metal, this exception is a result of the metalloid characteristics of the element. Silicon is held together by large covalent bonds which require a lot of energy to break, while the rest of the nonmetals are held together by van der Waals forces, which are very easily broken. Periods 4, 5, and 6 all follow a pattern where the boiling point will increase as the atomic number increases until it reaches a peak, and from there it will level off and start to decrease until it gets to the metalloids, where it will make a jump up before it decreases to the nonmetal at the left. <coughs> Did you say families? Families? I wish I had a family. No, silly orphan. The families of the periodic table are the vertical columns. From families 1 to 14, the boiling point decreases as the atomic number increases. Starting at family 15, the atomic number increases as you move down the column. This makes sense because families 1 through 14 are mainly composed of metals and metalloids, while families 15 through 18 are mainly nonmetals. Wait a minute!
that's pretty much it.